Charles, welcome to the Rich Eisen Show. Are you wearing the jacket now? Uh, no, I'm at the I'm at the dentist's office. I had to get <laughs> knee surgery on Tuesday, and now I'm at the dentist's office today. So, okay, I was about to say I, you went to the dentist to get knee surgery. No, I went to, I went to the, I went to Doctor Cooper to get knee surgery and tell the dentist to work on these rag, those raggedy mouth of mine. It is it, it is pretty raggedy, but, but that's yeah, the, is, that's, but that's one of your endearing qualities, out. though. So, hey, you, I, all yeah, you of know, us can't be all of us can't be six five and beautiful, can we? No, you know, I'm, yeah, I know I'm not. I'm not even close to that myself. The beautiful part I got, but not the six five. But Chuck, <laughs> <laughs> Chuck, uh, you, I, I, you know, I've told you several times how proud I am of you. Uh, making it into the Hall of Fame, well-deserved, and you should have been in there a long time ago. Uh, but we all heard that story right now. But what's, what's the craziest thing, uh, most unexpected thing that happened during that weekend? Man, you know, the um, the thing, you know, the whole week everybody was telling you, you're going to cry, you're going to cry and all that. But, um, you know, the, the, the emotional thing is two things. Um, when they did the gauntlet where they had all the Hall of Fame lineup you walk through, and all the guys, most of the guys that I played with or on this team that I was, were their man. And, you know, when you just lock lock arms, man, and um, and you just look at each other, man, you give each other that respect from that. You don't have to say, um, you know, welcome to the Hall of Fame. You you feel that energy, that vibe. And the other unexpected moment is when um, um, Gene said, our daughter, man, we were, we were sitting in the back and um, we were rem- reminiscing about our or her dad, and you know, and I, and she was just talking, and I had to tell her, I said, you know what, I, said, I met Junior at the um, Pro Bowl. I said, but you know, I never had one of those type of relationships with him, but he was a great man, and um, and you know, it was she, she moved the whole room, and then when she was just talking, you know, so that was that was um, unexpected. It was a great moment, yeah, Sydney Seau, Charles. I think whether you were in the building, whether you're on the stage. Uh, I know me watching at home on the couch. It was a great moment. Your moment up there, the one that we just played, was hysterical as well. Um, or not, not the Sydney was. I'm sorry, that came out wrong. You know what I'm saying. But yeah. how, how, how many people here since Canton have come up to you and asked you about that golf story? Oh my God, man! I get, I get that, and um, I, that was the thing I get all the time too. Is is about the um, the mental illness? I get a lot of. I get, I'll be walking down the street and people just hand me letters, you know, and, uh, you know, about that kid, that dad, or someone. And uh, and about 10 people that I invited to a Hall of Fame uh, couldn't make it because either that daughter or father had be um, institutionalized for mental illness. So, you know, it, it's a touching story, but, you know, Mr. D and them, they did me wrong because, um, you know, I'm a country boy, man. You know, I, I ain't never seen no golf course. So, you know, <laughs> not alone, never knew how to play. And get off the green. Get off the green, man. Come on, bro. Hey, I want to ask them, was they blind? All this stuff is green. You know what I'm saying? What is going on? Thank you for cleaning it up this time, Charles. Yeah, yeah, you know. You know, I try to do good. Or Charles, uh, on the lines of the mental I- illness, uh, how relevant, how prevalent do you think it is in the league? And and, and two part question: uh, How difficult do you think, or, or why do you think it's so difficult for guys to actually say, "I need some help"? Well, uh, the first thing I like to say this e, is: These guys are not suffering from drug addiction. You know, um, you know that problem is is mental. It's one hundred percent. It's you know. I've, I've talked to a lot of these young guys. What they've been through in that life, Eric, at this young age, I ain't been through in my whole life. You know, and most of it, it ain't about they drink or do drugs because that's the only way they can um, feel good about themselves. They can't move around unless they got six, seven guys with them so they can feel comfortable. You know, and, and I was telling them, you know, I told the commissioner, I told the powers to be, that you know what they concentrating on the wrong de- wrong daggone thing. They need to attack the mental illness part of it, and not worry about that. If you if you can get them mentally stable, you won't have to get the rest of you won't have to worry about the rest of the stuff. And because I I can tell you Eric, I go up there, I stick my head in a hornet nest, and I know I I see them. They act like me, so I know something wrong. <laughs> and, um, Shoot. So you and I and I tell these dummies, I say, you know what? They got about ten people walking around this locker room observing you. They know what's going on with you. 
I said, so the next step for you to do is ask for help because they got it for you. But, you know, they're afraid. It's just, you know, and, and, and the thing that I do, I don't tell these young guys what to do. I tell them about me. I tell them how I felt when I walked into the league, how I felt growing up as a kid, how I, I never measured up with my brothers, how, you know, I felt like everybody was against me. You know, I felt like everybody was picking on me, telling me there was something wrong with me. So I used all of those things to motivate me to grow stronger and stronger and stronger. But at some point, at some point, you got to you got to get the help you need. And it took me a long time to get it. But when, once I once I said, you know what, you're right, my life changed. I'm able to I'm able to think. I'm not, I'm not in that reactionary mode 24 seven. Because that's what I always did. And, you know, one of, the, one of the best things was Emmett Smith, you know, we, our daughters play soccer together and stuff. So we were just talking. But every time I see him, I attack him, right? He said, Charles, hold up, Charles. He said, you won't, you won't let anybody be your friend. And, you know, and, I, and, and he walked away, man. And I'm sitting there thinking about it, man. That was one of those moments, gotcha moments, where I'm going like, where did that come from? And then I realized that, all I did was every time I see my teammates, I would attack them first because I want to get the first leak in. And now my whole life changed. Shoot, I hug everybody, man. I'm good. <laughs> I hug my enemies too. Charles, I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying, and I know how you, you say you stick your head in the hornet's nest, and I know how you try to help some of these guys. Um, are, are you talking, ha having conversations with, with uh, Alden Smith, the Randy Gregories, um, and trying to help these guys? What, what, what has that been like? I mean, you know, see, you know, Alden, Alden, man, he's a great, great kid, man. Um, it's just some of the cho some of the choices that he makes are mind-boggling. But you know, I tell I, I tell you, I, 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 I told him I'll fly anywhere to see him and help him. You know, but he got to move his feet. He got to move his feet, man. He can't just think. Okay, um, people are trying to set me up. People are trying to hurt me. You know, because. Guess what? That is not the case. The case is that's how because we we we're, we're, a lot of us are suffering from mental illness. We we put it on somebody else and make that our reality. I used to be able to stand. I would stand there and listen to someone talk for 15 minutes, and the only thing I get out is one negative thing they said about me. And then guess what? That becomes my whole reality, and then that turns into hate. So I know how these guys are processing information. And that's why I tell the league it's more important for them to get psychological help than it is to deal with the, they got to deal with the mental part before they can deal with anything else. But, but you know, the league, hey, guess what? Let's just suspend. Let's just punish. You know, how about just treat, make them go to treatment centers, make them go to a dual diagnosed center. And guess what? They'll get the help they need. And, um, you know, that's what I push, man. They probably don't like me because, you know, um, I'm very direct and, uh, and um, you know, and I tell the commissioner and his gang that if they don't do something like that, the league, you know, the league gonna fold out the ball. Well, Charles, it's why we love you. It's because you are direct, and we appreciate the time when you're calling in here out of the dentist office. No one likes to talk after <laughs> going to the dentist office. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Let's do this again soon, Charles. But congratulations again, and thanks for always being real, and thanks for always being honest. Hey, man, Andrew and he, hey, I love you, Bob, guys, man. Hey, keep spreading the word, okay? You Ch too. Likewise. Love you, Chuck, man. Likewise. Talk, talk to you soon. Peace, my brother. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.